It's 51 years since Portsmouth beat Arsenal. If they win today, they would surely be safe. If Arsenal win, they will guarantee a top four finish and more Champions League football next season. Portsmouth's player of the season, Glenn Johnson, has a muscle injury and is replaced by Noe Pamero at right back. This is first start of the season since before Christmas. Jermaine Pennant comes in for David Nugent. Van Persie, Silvestre, Gallas, Clichy, Eduardo and Rosicki are injured for Arsenal. Almunia, Fabregas, Torre, Gibbs, Diaby and Adebayor are rested with the second leg of the Champions League semi in mind. Only Sanya, Song and Walcott played at Old Trafford. Andre Arshavin, who is cup-tied for the Champions League, captains Arsenal today. It's seven goals in 11 starts for Arsenal so far. Here's Bel Hadj, he's muscled the way through, and he's missed the target. Well, a little bit of pace and a lot of determination from the Algerian but not enough composure. Danielson finds Ramsey. Walcott's making a run, Ramsey has spotted it, and Walcott almost got it onto Vela, just a touch from Distan, held the Mexican up, but he's still there, Vela. Oh, and Distan slid in with a challenge, and the decision is a corner. That's the edge of the penalty area, he's clearly inside the box as the leg comes out. And there's no contact between Distan and the ball. Crouch with a clearing header. Arshavin. Back post, good save as it crept over the line. It has Nicholas Bentner. David James should have saved it. He got both hands to it. And Nicholas Bentner has put Arsenal in front in the 14th minute of the game with a towering header credit Bentner for that but big question marks here about David James back in by Arshavin, well won by Bentner but the goalkeeper has both hands to it a little flick off Pennant and Abue is in behind here Abue square, Vela oh great block by Herodeson well, Vela took an eternity to get the shot away. And Herman Herideson made the most of the time he was given and made the block. No one down the right-hand side for Portsmouth. Pennant playing it infield to Crouch. Bell Hatch down the middle. Here he is, back into Crouch. Nicely done. Oh, and Crouch has put it wide. Delightful build-up really nice build up by Portsmouth but Crouch dinked it over the goalkeeper seemed to have done everything right curling and curving agonisingly away from the post Bouet oh, given away here's Arshavin that's a risky challenge Lee Mason has a look at it and says no well, Arshavin had a long look at the referee there. Taking on Pamero, who sticks out a leg. Well, it was uh, a close one. Lee Mason was absolutely convinced that there wasn't a penalty. Failure again. Campbell took it away from Benton. Bakari Sanya. Lovely ball, Arshavin. Oh, no, the referee's given a penalty this time. Sean Davis made contact with Arshavin, and Arsenal have a penalty. Look at Arshavin here and Davis chasing it. Now out comes the right foot of Davis and there he touches the ball. And Arshavin, when he picks himself up, appears to point to the corner flag and turn to the referee and say no penalty. And Nicholas Bentner, 2-0. Confidently done. Arsenal have a two-goal advantage. Very well-placed penalty right in the corner from Bentner. Well, no expert in body language, and certainly not Russian body language, but is Arshavin saying here that's not a penalty? Portsmouth make a double change at half-time. John Utaka 
and Kanu both come on. Herman Harideson and Jermaine Pennant make way. Here's Campbell. Crouch with a downward header. Hughes arriving. Hughes inside. Oh, Lash White. Hughes into the path of Utaka. And his body was swinging as he hit the shot. And swinging wide. Well, the introduction of the two Nigerians, Utaka and Kanu, has certainly lifted the crowd. It seems to have had a knock-on effect on the team as well. Long from James. Johnny Utaka, crouch! Portsmouth looked like a different side. Johnny Utaka with the little deft header into Crouch. Should have been a corner, I think. Distant. Pamara. Kanu. Good try, good save by Fabianski. John Utaka's there first, Crouch wants it square, Sanya blocks. This is a real contest again, all of a sudden, and out of the blue. Portsmouth are causing Arsenal all kinds of problems. Mullins. Onside, John Utaka, round Fabianski, can't get the shot away. And Sanya can clear, he did all the hard work, John Utaka. And then he just couldn't get his feet sorted out to get a shot on goal. And the goal was empty. Has been at uh, the heart of everything since he came on at half-time. And here's Walcott. Vela. Arshavin. This could be dangerous. Back to Vela. Oh, and it's three. Portsmouth whipped up a 10-minute storm at the start of the second half and that storm has just been blown out by Carlos Vela. Set up by Arshavin and Arsenal are three in front. Just worked a little bit of room for the left-footed shot, Carlos Vela, and lashed it into the corner for his sixth of the season. And all Portsmouth's endeavours at the start of the second half have come to naught. Ramsey, lovely ball, Arshavin. Pamaro made the challenge and the referee says it's right on the edge of the penalty area and it's a red card. And it's just got a lot worse for Portsmouth. Well, you can't really argue, he's clearly the last man. Clear goal-scoring opportunity denied and Portsmouth are down to 10 men with 12 minutes to go. It's been a fairly comfortable victory and Arsene Wenger enjoys nothing more than seeing his young players excel and they have largely excelled today though Portsmouth have a free kick here for a foul by Alex Song John Utaka oh tipped over well by Fabianski good pace good curl good dip by the Nigerian Hatch to whip it in left-footed. Kanu there, Distan, Fabianski made the save somehow. And Distan will raise his eyes to the heavens and wonder how he was denied his first Portsmouth goal here. It's a fantastic save by Fabianski. A big decision, the penalty, which led to their second goal. What was your view of that? Um, well... The boys were adamant it wasn't, and I've seen it since, and I think I have to agree with, with our players. You know, it was he definitely touched the ball with his foot, and there's absolutely no physical contact whatsoever. It seemed as though Archerin was saying, that's not a penalty. He seemed to be waving his finger like that to the referee, as if to suggest he didn't feel it was a penalty. From outside, to me, it looked penalty, but uh, uh, if it's true, and did Archerin did that, uh, credit to him. <laughs> yes, but you'll still be pleased, of course, that Nicholas Bentner came up and scored it, whatever it was. <laughs> yes, but uh, I believe that if Arshavin thought it was not a penalty, he said that, uh, it's very honest. You don't find that many times in, uh, in the game. Blackburn, Sunderland and Wigan to come, you'd back yourself, wouldn't you, to get enough points from those games? 
Uh, yeah, of course. Um, you know, we've, we've always believed that we've got enough quality to get out of the situation that we found ourselves in. Uh, it's just a case of doing it. And, um, you know, we've got to go out there. Obviously, those, those three games are important. Um, they're winnable games. We, we believe we can win them. So um, as long as we, we get a couple of points, you know, more than that, uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. Mark, once again, an, another example of the enormous potential of Arsenal. Yeah, um, and I think, you know, if you're a club like Portsmouth and you play against the, the top four teams, you, ha you have to score the first goal. Unfortunately for them today, that, that was down to Arsenal. And Sam was in between the two massive games that they've got. It turned out to be a very, very good result. And I think, you know, in the midst of all that, we, we might have found in the Premier League a true gentleman. Yeah. One who, a very, very sporting gentleman, actually turned around today and said, no, it wasn't a penalty. This is our shoving. Ball gets played into the box. Away he's through. Tackle comes in. Most definitely makes contact with the ball. The defender, no argument about what's And we think our shoving saying to the referee, corner. <laughs> yeah. No, it was no, it wasn't a penalty. Most definitely. So, I mean, if he did, I mean, that's absolutely. De definitely not a penalty, which I think is great. Very sort of refreshing. Very much so. This is a one. Robbie Fowler against Arsenal. David Seaman comes out and he says, no, no ref, not a penalty at all. Funny that both refs ignored the players. Didn't yeah, you? said it was a penalty anyway. I tell you, I mean, and Robbie Fowler went on to score goal. What would have been interesting if he'd just chipped it into uh, David Seaman's arms, but he didn't. Yeah. In, in, youngest, youngest Arsenal team, yeah. youngest team in the Premier League. Oh, and what they, they about played. the bench as well? Oh, the, it's rather the, the inexperienced. Bench. Have, have a look at this. I mean, just the names alone. But, you know, not one of the seven have actually started a league game. Yeah. It's what, a conveyor belt. You know what they say, don't you? You win nothing with kids on the bench. It's right. still very relevant <laughs> to this day. Loads of foreign kids yeah. on that bench, man. Exactly. Um, and it, Placed by Eric Neverland, who England were up against the mighty Arsenal, the most successful women's team in the history of the game in this country. The Gunners were looking to win their 10th cup final. This cute ball through to Susan Grant nearly gave them the lead. Sunderland, playing in their first FA Cup final, conceded a soft opening goal. Katie Chapman, an England international, doesn't miss from there. Late in the second half, on 90 minutes in fact, Arsenal made it two with a moment of skill from Kim Little. But that just sparked Sunderland into life. Sarah Danby tested the agility of Emma Byrne. And in the last minute of injury time, Kelly McDougall scored a wonderful individual goal, but it was too late for a turnaround. So Arsenal lift this trophy for the fourth year running. Their manager, Vic Akers, is the kit man for the men's team. So his attention turns to a rather big game tomorrow night against Manchester United. Selina Hinchcliffe, BBC News. Hailed Cristiano Ronaldo as unplayable after Manchester United reached the Champions League final for the second year in a row. United beat Arsenal 3-1 at the Emirates, 4-1 on aggregate. They'll play the winners of tonight's match between Chelsea and Barcelona in the final in Rome. But they'll be without Darren Fletcher, who was sent off for a foul on Cesc Fabregas, despite appearing to win the ball. It's Rome next, with United now just one more victory from a first successful Champions League defence. If only Arsenal had been as careful as some of their fans. Almuni had been heroic in the first leg, but will be haunted by this. The Wenger's team now have to score four. Fans who'd been dreaming of Rome were now seeing a North London nightmare. Keeping the faith is one thing, keeping out United in this. For the game, and that makes a difference. I think it... They showed that to me again. And when the chips are down, they, they don't let me down. We do not have the feeling uh, that we played the semi-final of the Champions League because we were out of it after 10 minutes. And uh... there's never the... know how much money he'll have to spend in the summer, but says he'll only try to sign one or two experienced players. And the Arsenal manager says there's no need for a major overhaul, despite defeat to Chelsea, meaning they'll finish fourth in the Premier League. They had one thing in common: their teams have been dumped out of the Champions League and needed to come back fighting for points. The striker took it himself and found the head of Alex, who buried it. Against the run of play, it may be. But that's a hammer blow to Arsenal's hopes of finishing third. 3-0, chaos in the Arsenal penalty area. 
to right and Fabianski conjuring up the own goal. Bender came on and got Arsenal on the score sheet. But as they threw more men forward, Chelsea... Opinions uh, come from everywhere and uh, you have to live with that. I, I still believe uh, uh, when you have responsibilities, you have to make decisions and stand up for it. And uh, until now, we have not done too badly. It'll be a case of maybe small evolution and certainly not revolution. Why we have a, a team who is uh, 22 years old, why should we uh, look for a revolution? That would be uh, stupid and, and uh, not responsible. The team uh, had a great, great reaction. I'm uh, proud of them. And it shows that this team is one of the, the strongest uh, in, in Europe. Strength, the biggest you facing Arsenal, who will now have to play a qualifying tie to reach next season's Champions League. Peter Staunton, Sky Sports. So Arsenal will now finish fourth and face Champions League qualifiers either side of their first two Premier League games. Those fixtures scheduled for August the 18th and 19th with the second leg a week later. Well, the qualifiers will be unseeded for the first time, so Arsenal could face tougher opposition. As things stand, if the season was over today, Arsenal would be paired with Valencia, Fiorentina, Hertha Berlin or Lyon in an open draw. But Arsene Wenger's got no regrets and he believes the gap to Manchester United is closer than the 18-point deficit would suggest. You know, if you look at the, at the statistics of the two teams, for example, Man United and us, we have scored similar amount of goals. We have conceded more, and uh, in the passing quality in the final third, and uh, in your position half, we are as good as Man United. We have conceded more goals than Man United. That's where the difference lies. Signings. I look now like I do not want to spend money. I'm nothing against uh, the spending money. I just feel, as always, to manage this club within his own resources. And I will do that. If you want me to uh, uh, get the club bust, I'm not the person to do that. That is for sure. Wenger's watched 27 year old Andre Arshavin make a big impact since his arrival three months ago and says he's after recruits of a similar age. We don't need uh, more, more players without experience. If we, if we add people, uh, it will be with experience, yes. Wenger expects United to retain Damesh at Sky Sports. Two years ago, Arsenal finished fourth and 21 points behind Manchester United, despite beating the champions home and away that season. Last season, Arsenal finished third and were just four points behind United, but ahead of Saturday's game at Old Trafford, Arsenal are currently 18 points behind United and will again finish fourth in the Premier League. And you can see if Manchester United can wrap up the title against Arsenal. It's live from noon on Saturday. It's on Sky Sports 1 and HD 1. Premier League titles won by Manchester United, but only one... But Arsene Wenger's got no regrets, and he believes the gap to Manchester United is closer than the 18-point deficit would suggest. You know, if you look at the, at the statistics of the two teams, for example, Man United and us, we have scored similar amount of goals. We have conceded more, and uh, in the passing quality in the final third, and uh, in your position half, we are as good as Man United. We have conceded more goals than Man United. That's where the difference lies. Innings. I look now like I do not want to spend money. I'm nothing against uh, the spending money. I just feel, as always, to manage this club within his own resources. And I will do that. If you want me to uh, uh, get the club bust, I'm not the person to do that. That is for sure. Age. We don't need uh, more, more players without experience. If we, if we add people, uh, it will be with experience, yes. Wenger expects United to retain the title but has urged his players to delay the party by beating them at Old Trafford on Saturday. Damesh at Sky Sports. Two years ago, Arsenal finished fourth and 21 points behind Manchester United despite beating the champions home and away that season. Last season, Arsenal finished third and were just four points behind United but ahead of Saturday's game at Old Trafford, Arsenal are currently 18 points behind United and will again finish fourth in the Premier League.